Thanks so much, Brian. Do you believe that the former mayor of New York said that to a pregnant employee? Well, a pregnant employee sure said that he did. Why shouldn't I believe her? You know, I'm just really tired of this world. This one is personal for me. It really is. But you Pregnancy believe that back, you believe he's that kind of person real. who did that. Look, pregnancy discrimination yeah, is yeah. real. And these we have gone on and on and on where people say, oh, I can't really believe the woman. Really? Why not? So there you see Elizabeth Warren asking a crucial question. Why is it that we give such powerful men such benefit of the doubt when women in the workplace accuse them? But she's not talking about Joe Biden and Tara Reid. She's talking about Michael Bloomberg. That was with Chris Matthews a few weeks ago on MSNBC just before the South Carolina primary. But what she's saying about Bloomberg, you could say the exact same thing about Joe Biden. But Elizabeth Warren refuses to do that. She refuses to draw the obvious line from point A to point B, which is that all of the things she said about Michael Bloomberg, you can say the very same about Joe Biden. And yet many Democratic Party people that criticize Bloomberg are acting like cowards because they won't do the same regarding Joe Biden. Let's play the second part of that interview where Warren makes it even clearer that men in powerful positions have a clear motive to lie, that women often don't have that same motive, and that she believes the woman. My question about him, you believe he's lying. I believe the woman. You believe he's lying. Which means he's not telling the truth. And why would he lie? Because just to protect himself. Yeah. And why would she lie? I mean, that's the question, Chris. Why do you was, assume that event. he's and, and the guy? I just want to make sure you're clear about this. You're confident of your accusation. Look, all I know is what she said yeah. and what he said. And I've been on her end of it sure. in the sense right. of discrimination based on pregnancy. It happens all across this country and men all across this country say, oh, my gosh, he never would have said that. Really? Okay, let's talk about So guys, that's clear as day that she's challenging Chris Matthews and other media figures like him that play devil's advocate on behalf of some of the richest and most powerful men in the world when regular women accuse them of things in the workplace and how that has to stop and how we have to give those women more credence. Warren was lauded for that interview and rightfully so. She did the right thing there, challenging Michael Bloomberg, and Chris Matthews and the male dominated media narrative about women who say uncomfortable things about the rich and wealthy and well connected. But Warren shows that she's an absolute hack, an absolute traitor to progressive and feminist causes when she refuses to apply that consistent principle to Joe Biden. And in fact, since the Tara Reid story has gone mainstream, Elizabeth Warren has continued to stand by Joe Biden's side. In fact, just yesterday, Elizabeth Warren said that she found Joe Biden's denial of Tara Reid's story credible and convincing and that she is still proud to have endorsed Joe Biden. That is hackery, guys. Hackery of the highest, highest order. If you believe that the women talking about Michael Bloomberg were telling the truth, then you have to really believe that Tara Reid is in the same position. There is no fundamental difference. They are women in the workplace dealing with issues that have fundamentally challenged them on their human dignity and their career potential versus powerful men. And those powerful men are denying things. And we have to believe those women, or at least we have to give them the fundamental benefit of the doubt. I've seen no evidence, no reason to treat Joe Biden's story any different than Michael Bloomberg's story. And yet Elizabeth Warren right now wants you to think that she's a big feminist hero for standing up to Michael Bloomberg. And that was the right thing to do. She was 100% right to do that. And then think that she can get away with letting Joe Biden get away with what he did to Tara Reid and not face a single political or social or economic consequence for what he did. That's Elizabeth Warren. And she's showing the naked hypocrisy 
of her and of other supposedly progressive Democrats when they defend Joe Biden in a way they would never defend somebody else for those same actions. And we know why this is happening, guys. We know 100% why. Because Elizabeth Warren is thirstier than somebody in the middle of the Sahara Desert to become vice president. That Warren is selling out progressives and she's selling out working women for her own personal glory and power and legacy. She wants to be vice president and she's willing to sell out Tara Reid and all women like her, including the Michael Bloomberg women that she spoke about, just so she can hitch a ride on the Joe Biden wagon to the White House. What a tragedy. What a travesty of a supposedly progressive feminist senator to do this to all women. This is awful. And it's even worse, guys, when you look at what happened with Elizabeth Warren during the last stages of the primary, where she basically attacked Bernie Sanders for allegedly saying that a woman couldn't win, when Bernie didn't say that. And you have to remember that Elizabeth Warren basically didn't endorse Bernie Sanders and then said it was because of emojis and Bernie supporters being mean on the internet. And so there you have it. Warren basically said that her identity as a woman was one of the reasons she didn't win, that Bernie Sanders basically said a woman couldn't win, and that Bernie supporters were mean to women candidates like her on the internet. And then she goes ahead and endorses a man like Joe Biden that did vile things to Tara Reid, and to be clear, many other women, because Tara Reid's not the only person bringing up negative stories around Joe Biden and his personal issues over the past few weeks and months and years. Warren has exposed that she's never truly been an ally of women or of the left, ever, not even in an indirect sense. And I don't even think she's going to get her payoff. That's the thing here. It's all for nothing. I don't think Warren's going to get to be VP. Warren's not going to be Joe Biden's running mate. That's my belief. I know some polling's been done that shows that she would be popular with a lot of Democratic supporters, including some Bernie supporters, when it comes to being Biden's preferred vice presidential pick. But I don't think he's going to go with her. She's a senator from Massachusetts, which is deep blue, and she finished third in her own state. And Elizabeth Warren being picked as vice president could leave a Republican governor to pick her replacement, which, of course, would give a further imbalance to the Senate, making it that much harder for the Democrats to ultimately win the Senate. Again, she's not from a crucial swing area of the country, nor is she young, nor is she racialized. So when you throw that all in, Warren won't be picked. And you add to the fact that even with Warren's betrayal of the left, her proposed policies, however you know disingenuous they might be, are too radical for Joe Biden. The wealth tax alone from Elizabeth Warren probably scares away Wall Street. And so they would much rather have a full-on neoliberal like Amy Klobuchar before they would ever pick Elizabeth Warren. They would much rather have Gretchen Whitmer, who has direct ties to the insurance industry, before they would pick Elizabeth Warren, who even on a milquetoast level wants something like Medicare for All, maybe sort of eventually. Elizabeth Warren sold out Bernie, she sold out women, she sold out progressives, all because she is thirsty to be vice president. What a downfall. What a downfall of somebody that a lot of us respected, but that in retrospect, we never should have had any respect for.